I would like to call this meeting to order, and to my right we have Councillor Gina Luis Guerra, and to the left we have Elisa Klein from Ward 7, and Gina Luis Guerra is from Ward 2, no, Ward 4, sorry about that, and I'm City Councillor Marianne LaBarge from Ward 6. I'd like to announce the announcement of audio video recording of this meeting. And now I'll bring it on the floor um, an election of chair. Are there any nominations? I would like to be a chair. <laughs> I nominate So I'm chair again. <laughs> Okay, approval of 2014-2000 meeting schedule, and I've asked Mary Major to be here. Because of what's occurring with the month of April, and April 21st is a holiday, and the city buildings are closed. So we need to reschedule that meeting if you could look at your schedule for the month of April, and Mary, you were going to check it out about room availability for us and, and dates. Um, it, it's up to you to decide what day you want, and then I find you a meeting place. So right now this list is listing Tuesdays, but it's my understanding we want it to be Mondays, correct? Yep. Oh, no. I'm sorry, I'm looking for at the wrong list. Excuse day, me. You mean, pardon me. I was looking at the wrong... That's your finance. That's okay, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Social is it's third Monday. Date. We can't have it on April 21st, so we need to designate another <clears throat> date. But you might want to discuss what time you want your meeting, too. That affects things. Pardon? You want to discuss what time you want your meetings. One right time. now they're scheduled for 5 to 7, but if you want to change that, you should discuss right. that. I would what? be happy to, to make it a little bit earlier, Elisa. I don't know if that's going to make... It's a, it's a problem for me, yeah. and just in terms of work. Um, you have a The meeting. 5 to 7 is preferable for me, but if it's, you know, if it's prohibitive for both of you... Well, there's some, we'll we there's some thought of um, that department heads come sometimes and coming at 4 sort of at the end of their day as opposed to like over up hours for them would be better. Um, there might be, they might be more available, but... It has always been from 5 to 7, so I guess that's not, it's never been prohibitive for them to show up. Excuse me, but I'm just going to interrupt for one minute and remind you that no one is actually taking your minutes. I'm not here to take your minutes. Okay. Okay? So you no, might, we'll, we'll might want to decide that before you continue discussing. Um, we need to somebody to volunteer to take minutes of our meeting. You can alternate it because I'll be doing the agendas, so the two of you is one. Okay, so we'll, okay. I'm happy to do it today. You want to do it today and then I'll do it next time? Okay, that takes care of that, Mary. Thanks, Mary. Um, I had talked with Pat Keller, and she thought it would be nice also if we scheduled our meetings at 4 o'clock because of the department heads who have to stay and wait till 5 o'clock to come in. If we have agencies <coughs> coming, like ServiceNet, and whatever, that is reasonable to bring them in at five o'clock. And I have to agree with Peg, I think like with David Pomeroy's, the Board of Health and that, we're keeping them and waiting, and they have to sit back and wait till five o'clock to be heard. So, how I, I often, know. how often do, do department heads come to these meetings? Quite a bit. Like at every meeting? Is, is oh, no, no. No. Like Steve Connors for veterans, that's periodically. Um, David Pomeroy, it's the Board of Health. Pat Keller, Housing Partnership, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's either which way. It doesn't make a difference so to me. So we're talking about a possible shift from 5 to 7 to 4 to 6. Right. I can so that's true. You sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So that will work out fine for you. Yes, 
still have to address the April 21st question. Well, if you're well, going to do that, to then first. you could possibly have a meeting on April 14th, Monday, before the Rules and Orders Committee. You could have it from 4 to 5 on April 14th if you want to just keep it close to that. Or you could technically have it um, 4 to 5 p.m. on April 22nd, the Tuesday after what would have been your normal meeting. I like um, to suggest that we maybe do Tuesday the 22nd and keep it as close to the 21st as possible. Does that conflict mm -hmm. with anything that you know of, Mary? Finance, well, we're as finance as is finance scheduled for not, five. So we're okay with that. So that's fine with me on the 22nd. I couldn't do the April 14th. Yeah. I'm um, so finance is scheduled for five. We're not going to have on the twenty second. This is April. We're talking April. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. We do have finance in April. But it starts at five on the twenty second. Right. So but you our could. Are from, uh, I'm not going to be able to just do an hour meeting. Okay. That's the problem. Um. So we anticipate that these meetings are going to take two hours generally? Because <coughs> we have two different agencies that might come in. Can we look at April 23rd? Is April 23rd open? That's open. Okay. It's fine for me. Okay. So, uh, so April 23rd and 4th to 6th? Should we look at a little day, Gary, just in case we can't get the room? Or? No, that'll be fine. Okay, so we're all set with that. And 2015. <coughs> which is the same problem, April 20th. And I don't have a calendar made up for 15. So we're looking at April of 2015? It's a Monday. April 20th. Mm -hmm. So do we want to try again the 21st maybe? The 21st transportation is in here from 4 to 6. Okay. But if we're looking at 2015 now, we also have January and February that are holidays for right. rescheduling, so not just April. Right. Oh, you're right. You might want to wait till closer to the end of this year to look at those again. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't you? I guess it's time. So we have three of them. Also, too, it's up to you two counselors, but as long as I've been on this committee, we've had the month of August off. Mm -hmm. and I don't know how you feel about that. Because uh, yeah. people are on vacations and department heads and whatever. Okay, so there will be no meeting in August, Mary, for okay. both 14 and 15. So. Okay. Um, I'd like to introduce Pat Keller. He's Housing and Community Development Planner of the City of Northampton. And she's going to be giving us an update regarding the community development block grant. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Is that the first time you met them, Peg? Yes. I don't get out. We've had So, an additional duty of this committee that's evolved over the last couple of years is to help the city um, determine community development block grant funding for a lot of the public social service agencies in town. So the annual award that comes down from HUD <clears throat> has been diminishing over the years, but hopefully it's kind of leveled off and we maybe might even see an increase at some point. But we're flying a little blind in this process at this time of the year, every year, because we don't know what the number is until HUD gives it to us usually. <clears throat> Hopefully by the time we're wrapping this up. But um, it's an annual allotment to the city, excuse me, <clears throat> that's usually about 
Well, it used to be close to a million dollars, and now it's hovering around <coughs> half a million. And 15% of that amount is allowed to go directly to social service agencies for activities that benefit households with low and moderate incomes. So there's infrastructure projects, there's like streets and sidewalks kinds of things, there's other things that we do with the money, but the way that we've been trying to bring in the expertise on your committee is just for the public services piece and working with the social service agencies. So the request for proposals is out now. There's an application online, and they're due in the end of this month. And then what I will do is um, either electronically or paper copy get you copies of all the applications so you can become familiar with them prior to the actual interview schedule, which is fast and furious. This is last year's. So don't pay attention to the times or the dates, but this is just an idea for you to see exactly how this manifests. And normally we have between, oh, somewhere around 15 <coughs> actual applications. So <coughs> you will see on there um, service nets, sheltering programs, um, survival center, MANA's soup kitchen, um, Center for New Americans, Literacy Project, Mass Fair Housing Center. <coughs> Um, so that's, that's kind of what the universe is that we're usually um, deliberating on. People will come forward with applications for a variety of <clears throat> dollar amounts and then depending on how much we know that we can disperse, um, we hover together at the conclusion of the third session. And we, we are booked for March 10th, 11th, and 12th up in the hearing room from noon to two. It was a time that worked for everybody. And we have two other folks that will be joining you. One is um, Todd Weir, who's the pastor at First Churches, who's very interested in getting to know the services community in Northampton better. Um, prior to him becoming a pastor, <clears throat> he ran a homeless shelter. So he's a kindred spirit and understands the world um, from our perspective. And uh, the other representative that we've had in the past is from the Human Rights Commission. And Rick Hart has been designated by that group, and he is president of Friends of the Homeless and works, um, you know, for years he was the reference guy at Forbes Library. So he's very committed and is happy to participate in this with you. So it'll be the three of you and Todd and Rick Hart. And I will be providing the staff support. So. I will guide you through it. Marianne's a seasoned pro, um, so it is, hopefully um, we'll carve off the first 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of the first session to just to get oriented, and I do have some evaluative project criteria that I'll zip you via email prior to our beginning, just so you have a sense of what we're looking for, and at the end, if it does become a competitive ranking process, that we'll have some base, um, usually it's you know projects that really address the needs that have been identified in the community. So I'm actually doing a public hearing tomorrow night with the CDBG grantees and all the other interested folks that are doing work in the community to come forward and let me know what they're seeing as far as priority needs right now. Are there underserved populations? Are there things that are gaps in our service delivery system that we need to plug. So I'm in the process of getting that information together now, which I will then share with you as we go the, through this deliberative thing, if it really gets down to that. Do you remember, Peg, last year we had some new applicants that came in, and we did not accept an agent. We were, I think, one. Um, I can't remember whether they were any new. I mean, community Legal Aid was new a couple of years before that, but it's open to everyone, and I, I do know that there are probably at least going to be two new ones this year. So then kind of everybody gets vetted equally. So that's what it looks like, and I will be in touch, and I'm really happy to have you guys participating in this. It's, I think you're going to enjoy it. It's, it's pretty mind-boggling, <clears throat> the amazing stuff that we thought we knew was happening out there, and then you really see it and hear it. It's, it's pretty moving. Bill had a good time doing it, and uh, 
Yeah, because we should have thought about our council president being on it this time. I'm sorry, I'm getting volunteer for that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so um, I'll be in touch. A quick thanks for figuring out what the time period is. Um, do you think on the last day when we kind of huddle together, do you think it'll go over two hours? I'm just, I can I can make it work. I just need to get some coverage. Um, since I don't know how many applications are coming in and how many interviews we may need to schedule, if there are a lot, it's possible we might need another session. Because okay. I think, you or know, I could go, I could go longer that session. I just need to make sure someone can pick up the kid. I could probably have a better idea once I know how many we actually have, okay. and lay out the interview schedule. And this is really not something that should be condensed into too right. brief a time from when we actually assign the dollars. So we don't want to short shrift that at the end. And if you guys are totally fried, then we should just set aside, you know, another hour or something later. But okay. but we can play. Maybe that that's what the council president can do. Can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. What um, proportion is the, of the application is actually funded most usually? In the past, we've gotten in the realm of maybe three hundred thousand dollar requests for roughly maybe one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to give out. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the agencies, um, they ask for what they need. And then we kind of work down to a number that fits into the whole program. Mm -hmm. And we try really not to go below like 2500 bucks because with the reporting requirements, it just becomes too cumbersome for them to even deal with mm -hmm. if the dollars are less than that. So we kind of have a bottom threshold. And none of these dollar amounts are huge. And usually what people end up doing is a lot of their other funding that they get, they have to show a local commitment mm -hmm. and a cash match some evidence of, of local community support. So a lot of people use our three thousand, four thousand dollar award, you know, to, to indicate that. So And they'll make that clear in their application that yeah. It's very, very interesting when the agencies come in yeah. and they talk about what they do and why they need the money and so forth. And you feel like and many times we have to make some serious decisions because of the amount of money we had a decrease there, and it was heartbreaking to have to say to some of the agencies who were brand new coming in, and we knew that we would support them 100%, and we could not. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, and it may look really rough and inhumane that you know these folks have like a 15-minute slot. But it works. We kind of have it down to a science, and you'd be amazed at the amount of information that can actually get imparted um, in that time period. So it works. And it's kind of a lot, a lot of the folks coming in you know, repetitively, so they have it down as well. So there will be six of us on the committee. Five. Plus you. Five, and me as staff support. Yeah, I don't vote. But sometimes towards the end, if it looks like there's a lot of moving parts, you know, I'll come in with some sample scenarios to just kind of give you guys a chance to start your own discussion to just, you know, frame the deliberation a little bit. So, so right now we do have enough of people on this committee. Staffed up, composed, ready to go, room is booked. Right. Just waiting for February 28th to see what we have in the hopper. And you were saying, when is the hearing? Tonight? Tomorrow night is the first public hearing. Because this is a smaller piece of an annual action plan that I do between January and March-ish to figure out the programmatic <coughs> year start, starting July 1 to June 30th. So there's other things going on that this all feeds into this annual action plan that's required by HUD. Okay. Thank, Thank you very so much. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll, I'll be around. Are you going to be upstairs later? Uh, should be. Because <coughs> uh, i got to meet the mayor a little bit after, too, so I'll come up and see her after. All right. I'm going to hang around for your next item as well. Okay. I don't know if I'm going this or not. Um, any public comment? Not a public comment, but uh, I've been asked by Mary to remind you to approve the minutes from uh, 
your last meeting. Yes, which thank you. Actually, you're the only one qualified to approve them, so, but. How do we do that if we don't have a warrant to approve them? Well, well, actually, oh, wait a minute. I thought you, you Councilor Adams, you didn't, uh, yeah, there I, was an, an email that was sent to every one of us counselors <coughs> in regards to approval of the minutes. If you weren't involved at a meeting, you could still go ahead and approve that. Yeah, you can uh, approve that's always been mine. It's, it's, also, it's also allowed and acknowledge that you can abstain if you don't feel that you're qualified yes, to approve the minutes. So, but yes, you can as a group um, nominate approval and vote on approval for that. Okay. Um, I make a motion of approval of the minutes of December 16, 2013. It, pardon my interruption one more time, but unfortunately the chair cannot, um, can't make a motion. Make a motion. So that would have to be the other members would have to make a motion. I make a motion okay. to approve the minutes from, when is it? December, December 16th, 2013. Second. Um, favor? Um, there were no minutes of November 18th. That was canceled due to a lack of quorum. No minutes of the Committee on Cultural and Recreation Services for October, November, December meetings were canceled. And that's it. Okay. Any public discussion or comment? Discussion. A resolution to support vibrant sidewalks. I had Mary Medora uh, make out copies or send me it by email just so that you counselors would have it. You could take a look at it because eventually it might be coming to this meeting. If I, may, if I could speak to that, the, the, um, the currently the resolution has been tabled, and we essentially have to track down where it is in the order. It was last referred to Ed Lou. It is my desire to actually put it back on the table, refer it to this committee in the hopes that this would be the best venue to host uh, public forums and discussions to help. Um, possibly amend or discuss the resolution and hopefully from those meetings or meeting that will come a resolution will go back to the council that we can vote on and the reason that I felt it was appropriate to come to this committee is that um, this committee is more sensitive to the issues of, of social justice and and the conflicts that usually come from usually the discussion is adversarial to people who um, receive social services, who are identified as homeless. Um, they are they are always held as the problem. A point in fact, I'd rather change. It's my hope that we change the culture of that conversation. And understand that we discuss everyone as citizens and community members. And I felt that this committee would be far better equipped, far more sensitive to that notion. To have that discussion. Plus, <coughs> should be told is your agenda is more flexible in some respects. You're not getting a lot of referrals. You know, the interest of getting referrals from the council, this committee rarely sees a referral. Um, and the recommendation for CDBG monies is a recommendation of the mayor. It's not. It's not to the council. So the council really needs needs to further ally and tighten up the bond between council and this council subcommittee. So I can't give you a timeline. Sooner the better. The Councilor Carney and I, it's our intent to see this um, be addressed before the summer for sure, before it starts getting warm when rather than in the heat of the annual conflict that we have, we revisit it each time as if it's new. But we we would like to have a tempered, thoughtful, civil discussion and conversation with the resolution moving forward or not, depending, with a recommendation. <coughs> uh, so we're going to try and figure out where it is in the in the civic process right now, because we're not really sure. Just in terms of recording, should one of us be like swinging around to like get the camera on you guys? No, or? but you know what, I'll identify my, uh, you, good point. You I say, identify myself as I'm City Council President Bill Dwight. I'm sorry, that's an excellent point. Usually the camera's wide, and so 
uh, <clears throat> but at least the audio will pick up. So, thank you. That was a good point. Okay, and for the record, Maureen Carney, uh, Ward 1 City Councilor. I also uh, sent along the resolution when I saw that it was on your agenda for the sake of new councilors. But I'll ask if you're going to be looking at that, that you also make note of the footnotes. I mean, it's maybe unusual for a resolution to have footnotes, but it was really um, meant to incorporate documents that are, um, well, especially the Nelson Nygaard study. So that is referenced in one of the footnotes. And I think if you just actually copy, I know it's a PDF, you might have to retype um, the, uh, the website. It'll bring you actually to that, to that document where you can see the reference to um, their recommendations about bench placement, et cetera. And then there was also the reference there from which I took the bulk of the uh, first part of the um, resolution from an academic journal, a planning journal, uh, and actually from which I um, took the term vibrant sidewalks. So it wasn't something that we made up. Um, so that's just for your information and when you get a chance to look at that and read and then offer whatever criticisms or changes you want. Uh, yeah, so the short answer is that it will be coming. You have the original resolution language that is proposed and just for historical purposes for yes. the two counselors who weren't present, it, it passed in first reading but then there Sorry. was then, then there was some conflict regarding the language and intent, which is why we, we offered, because in the, the, the resolution was actually more to promote a conversation than it was to actually declare something. We wanted to promote a conversation. You, we were inviting you to be the hosts of both that conversation and by extension, Peg. Uh, and I know she's excited because she has so little to do and she, she's, she just needs some busy work just to keep her out of trouble. So it passed, but then okay. it passed seven to two in first reading. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilors Tacey and Murphy um, uh, voted no, but seven councilors voted yes. And then at the second reading, um, we offered I offered to actually table based on um, concerns by a number of well, some councilors even after the first vote, but. Uh, uh, other residents and business owners, and the, and the goal was not to have something passed, so to speak. It was, in fact, at that point clear that what was needed was a community forum and a way for people to discuss the, the content that probably um, there hadn't been enough time. So we just haven't been, then Ed Lou offered, actually, to take the resolution into the purview of their own committee at which they would come up with the best way to conduct a community forum. And that was about eight months ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're the chair, you don't have to raise your hand. So. Okay. <laughs> My question is, I know, um, Councilor President, that you had mentioned about the forum, and I've already have talked with Peg Keller about this, but I think you had suggested about also the police department being involved in some of <clears throat> Well, it, it would certainly be your pleasure, but I, you know, I think the more agencies that we got involved in this, uh, usually when these conversations have been held, it's usually um, navigated between some social service agencies and, uh, and businesses. And this is not to exclude the businesses. I hope that the businesses would participate and be involved. And clearly, I'm sure they would. But also to bring in the police department the, uh, to discuss. Frequently, what's brought up is anecdotal um, history. And it's helpful when the police offer actually statistical um, uh, arrests or stops or mitigation that they've committed so that it, it, it tends to clear the air of some major questions and also, you know, because lots of people have anecdotal stories which are quite dramatic in some cases and appropriately so, but when we're discussing the resolution, I'd like to have as much facts, as much public input, as much input from the various departments that are impacted and there are a number of the 
people in the police department who could probably <coughs> testify to this very effectively. So it doesn't have to be a department head. It could be any any uh, you know any officer or or, or uh, ranking officer that they designate. So. And uh, would you also suggest Chamber of Commerce? Absolutely. I, uh, Chamber of Commerce, the bid, the whomever you you know, if you think of all the agencies that deal with the DBW yep. or, or the BPW. Mm -hmm. May I, Councilor? Yes. In addition, again, because this was drawn primarily from um, the planning arena, from an academic planning, from journal, you know, academic journal and the best practices in urban planning, and makes reference to um, studies that were uh, uh, solicited by the planning department. I think it's important to have that, have that, close that loop. And I also think it's very important for us to uh, bring in maybe even um, the uh, youth, uh, <coughs> excuse me, youth, 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 youth commission. Youth commission and um, also uh, because it touches on, on aspects of civil liberties, mm -hmm. I, I think it's appropriate to um, make sure that the local representative for the American Civil Liberties Union, well, Human Rights Committee, the Human Rights Committee, Human Rights Committee, Planning Office, yeah. Sustainability, it really literally covers, health yeah. Health yeah. Yeah. Health, yeah. Yes. So it won't all be unpaid. <laughs> and yeah, that would and, be and like people. all one, everybody getting together and putting the language together. And, 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 and in fact, I'd be glad to work with you on this when it comes to that point because it might not be able to be reasonably contained within one meeting. And it, uh, this is, I envision more along the line of a charrette where the community gets to discuss the same way we discuss, you know, Vision 2020 or, the, or, or, or Pulaski Park. But this is a larger, this has always been an issue, comes up every year, and, and um, there's a lot of finger pointing, and it's good to clear the air, get the facts out straight, and then describe what it is that we want, what we should have. And so, to that end, get as many, any affiliates who would be reasonably associated with this discussion, and I think everyone has been mentioned, it's an excellent idea. Uh, that's great. That'd be great. So. I, I agree with this 100%, and hopefully once I have veterans come in, veterans council, to get their schedule about the parades and so right. forth, I would like to start this in May, and hopefully we could complete this by July. Okay. That's, um, because I'm worried about the summer, just letting this hang on, mm -hmm. because people are on vacation, and we could run into a problem getting people coming in. Okay. Well, no. in July, you'll lose all students who might have <coughs> anything to... Was it your hope mm -hmm. to do this before? I, I, th th I think it should probably happen. To, I mean, I, to, to be honest, this came up um, initially in May yeah. last year. This, yeah, this like issue you. came to the fore after, during the Memorial Day week. Mm -hmm. the, 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 and the, it, so it was prompted by things happening from, I think, mid-May on, we're already right in the heat of what might be considered um, uh, potential conflict or, you know. And so if, if, there, if there were a way we were to address some, to preempt that and, have, and talk about it in April before. I will try to do that, Counselor. I need to get the Veterans Council in here. Well, if I could say that actually the Veterans Council is also an appropriate group to have participated in this. I was just going to ask and, you that. And I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think that you could have the Veterans Council come and describe their schedule, at the same time also have a portion of this meeting to discuss some of that, if that's true. I mean, I, I think um, the one thing that this committee is mandated to do is do Veterans Affairs. That's mm -hmm stipulated by law. The rest of it is actually at the, the, the discretion of the, mm -hmm. of the committee, but um, to that end, but this is also Veterans Affairs issues, and Steve Connor would be, I hope, would be involved in this. I know he is involved in every other level, so um, to have the 
to have the Veterans Council part of this discussion would be excellent. So, I, I will talk with Brad LeBay and mm -hmm. get his feelings toward this and so forth. Okay. I mean, it's been sitting on the block for quite a long time in one committee, which I don't understand why, because I wish it had moved, because we would have had this resolved. So I will do my best to try to get this moving. And again, just so that counselors uh, understand, I don't expect that just by having a discussion and even a community forum about, about this issue, that it will ever be really, quote unquote, resolved. That, in fact, um, the, my intent in introducing this at the time last year was to preempt what might have been another introduction of an anti-solicitation ordinance similar to that that was brought to the city of Worcester. So it's really more of a way of saying, as a, as a council, because ultimately it will be the council that votes on this, um, are we resolved to just know that this is what we have in the city of Northampton and, and not be moving forward towards what I found to be um, inappropriate legislation for this city? Right, and also I think like the calls that I got with people being upset was because of allowing people sleeping on the benches and so forth like that. And I shot you over one of those emails that I got from a resident who also is on a committee in the city, outraged with it. The, um, and my only concern now is that on the open meeting law issue that we are deliberating. Yes. I'm careful, I want to be very cautious about deliberating, which is why I much prefer to define the parameters of what I hope the plan the would be, not the outcome. And so, um, I mean, I think, I think we're all on accord on this one, at least as far as it doesn't require a vote, it's not deliberation as to who, should, who the participant should be and what this would look like. And I'm hoping there'd be great community participation. I think, it, I mean, the idea, the biggest objective is to have a clear, candid, frank, thoughtful, civil discussion about an issue that causes uh, controversy every year. So. Right. And, I'm, and I'm glad to say, Counselor, that you are willing to go ahead and help us to move this along and work with us very closely. And it would be great to have you go ahead and organize how this form would operate. Like, once we start with it, okay. that you lead it on. Oh. Okay, well, we have to be careful because it's your committee and I do not have any authority in this committee. But we could so, ask. Well, it, yeah, yes, I mean, we I, can ask. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do within the okay. of the constraints of the open meeting law and uh, protocol. So. Okay, thank you. I, can I um, make yes. two points? One is that I'm wondering, too, if there's some way that there is a convergence here with the process around um, planning for Pulaski Park, the, the plan for Pulaski Park is supposed to be done by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there's a lot of relevance to that process, and I'm not sure if there's some way in which we can talk to the folks at DPW that are overseeing that piece, or the planning department, I'm not quite sure. I think it's DPW, actually, overseeing well, the, that. Yeah, the Board the, of Public Works, yeah. Yes, the Board of Public Works. Um, so I just want to throw that in there, that that might be a useful thing to look into. And the other piece that I just have a question about is, um, we're now talking about doing this whole, maybe a, even a series of public meetings with a number of different departments in the city, a number of different groups of folks. Um, and we're doing this for a resolution, and I'm just wondering if, if maybe we could just get some historical information about whether or not there's an ordinance here that needs to be uh, designed, um, crafted, because if we, in fact, are going to collect this amount of public comment and input and we want an outcome that has some teeth. I wonder if an ordinance is um, more appropriate here than a resolution. Well, ultimately, I wouldn't disagree with that. I think that it's that you would be able to divine that after the process. Um, as I said, the resolution was designed to pr promote a conversation. 
what the re resolution of that conversation is. It would be determined by whomever, um, any counselor or this committee could draft an ordinance that they felt was appropriate or um, made sense, and not if not. And um, But the, the principal push was to promote the conversation. And, and I actually, I personally like the idea of combining it in some level with Pulaski Park discussion, but the, unfortunately, my big concern is timeline and also the fact that it may become obscured by the Pulaski Park discussion. Um, because we're, this discussion is a larger generic um, attitude, if you will, or, or uh, you know, discussion of attitude of what, what constitutes citizenship and citizens' rights. And that would certainly rhyme with a lot of the discussion of Pulaski Park, but Pulaski Park discussion is also principally about design, people's per perceptions of what they ideally want, and I, and, and I would be sorry if we lost the bigger philosophical conversation to the... Can I respond to that, that really Please. quickly? Yeah, it's yours. I, I actually, what I had in mind, I think, was that the discussion that's going to happen with all of these different groups and all of this community input feels important to me for the design of Pulaski Park, that, that all of that kind of theoretical Absolutely. and values-based discussions that, that are going to happen are directly relevant to how we want to design the kind of center of our city in Pulaski Park. So if anything, I think it's, it's about them being informed that we're going to go through this process and they take that into consideration in the design that they're going to submit in August. I, I so it's not so much them informing right. our process, but our yeah. informing their yeah. process. I, that's, now, this, uh, and, this yeah. resolution <coughs> is just not <coughs> for the city of Northampton. This resolution would be also for the town, for the town of Florence also. Well, it's we the have entire, parks there yeah. and benches. It's, Again, um, just so that I'm clear about part of my intent of putting this together, because I've been on the council um, six years previously when the uh, ordinance was proposed, the anti-solicitation ordinance was proposed. Um, or anti-panhandling or whatever. It was actually, they couldn't use those terms, so they, it was called uh, the anti-solicitation ordinance. And so it, it was, in fact, because there, were, there was rumbling around that, that that this resolution was meant to address. That I had said that, that that's what I was, I meant to kind of say, with this resolution, in so many words, um, we're not interested in, um, in such an ordinance here in the city of Northampton. And, and again, it doesn't say all that, but it's, it, it makes reference to um, some of those things that would be addressed, so uh, theoretically addressed by a, a um, anti-solicitation ordinance. I don't know the status of the one that was proposed in, in Worcester. Uh, I, the only thing I'm uncomfortable about is this, since we're talking about process, and this actually isn't about process, this is specific to oh, yeah. so, But, um, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, this all got, becomes unfolded in the conversation and discussion when, when these uh, form or for uh, occur. So, uh, yeah, I'm principally interested in process and how we set, the, set up the process and that the process go forward, that this thing not die in wherever the hell it is in committee. And, and I'm, I'm grateful that the, this committee is willing to take it on and, 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 and peg the enthusiastic and, and sage um, work on this as well. Well, so. also, um, just in terms of process, I don't think it's, I, I mean, it is sitting in the Economic Development, Housing, and Land Use uh, Committee, and I don't think that that's an inappropriate place for it to be in addition to this right. committee, um, just because issues that are raised by such, uh, such a resolution um, speak to economic development, at least in, in the sense that it's uh, business concerns. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also, it, my, my thing about this is this committee has the flexibility and that the Ed Lieu has a larger agenda with the things that are actually referred um, that yeah. might, you know, might yeah. delegate this to the less important study, whereas with this committee, you guys have the flexibility. It's certainly within your purview. 
it just it's a natural fit and I think it's an appropriate place for it to be and I think you guys will do a rock star job with it. So it, it's an interesting question I think though I think Ed Lu I, I, I mean it, it makes sense that Ed Lu should be involved in this process but for this to sit and be overseen by Ed Lu doesn't make sense to me because <coughs> it creates a very narrow furrow for where these issues sit. It's not just an economic issue. It really is a much broader, much more social service, much more kind of theoretical what we as a community want our community to be um, toward, towards its citizens around it, you know, what its citizenry deserves and wants. So um, it actually makes a lot more sense to me that it would sit in this committee and that this committee would, in fact, oversee this process and so I'm and I just need some understanding of what that means that it's sitting now in Ed Lu. What does that mean in terms of response? I, I think it can stay there. My sense my sense is it can stay there. You can also refer it to this committee and that doesn't stop this committee from moving forward with whatever you'd like to do in terms of And I'm actually on both committees, so is there some way I can be a branch between the two? Possibly. I I have to I have to admit that I parliamentarily parliamentarily I'm not really clear on the protocol, so I'm going to try and figure that out with some assistance from the city solicitor or, or the vice president to try and figure out how we get it into this committee ASAP, and if it requires another referral at the next council meeting, then so be it. That's fine. We'll put that on the agenda. Okay. If, if, um, if it needs to be revived in some way, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's also has the strange effect of being, it was tabled and then we voted to carry it over into this new session. But it's, it's kind of, it's, it's resolution limbo. And I don't know what we do to get it out, but we'll figure that out. I mean, that's just procedural. That just yeah, it, it, hopefully it's easy, but I just want to make sure that, that it's done properly. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know how that's done properly yet, so we'll figure Well, I'm happy to work with you on it, too, if there's a way I can move it in that committee. That'd be great. Hey, I don't want to beat my own point to death, but I do want to kind of return to something that I was saying before that um, I just want to pursue a little bit. Um, the idea of there being something beyond a resolution here, moving this, you know, thinking about what kind of ordinance we might need, and Bill, you responded, if I um, understood you correctly, by saying um, we have to wait and we have to go through this community process and see, in fact, what it kind of leads us to. I'm wondering, though, if it doesn't make sense on some level to um, launch this community process with some options for the community to discuss. I mean. Is this something that we want somehow codified? Is this, you know, do we want the outcome to look like this alternative to a resolution? I mean, I would feel, um, I feel comfortable with that because I think people need to understand how incredibly um, relevant this is to us as a community, and what we, where we could potentially go with um, giving it some teeth. So I, I would, and uh, I would agree with that, I, I would recommend um, following through with um, some other counselors outside of this committee to see what, if you were considering an ordinance, what that ordinance would look like, because in this case, as opposed to um, prohibiting something, <laughs> which is what essentially ordinances do, they prohibit something, mm -hmm. you're actually trying to expand rights. There are ways of crafting ordinances in that respect. Again, not my bailiwick. There are there are counselors and the city solicitor who are particularly adept at this. So I would consult with them. But uh, because ordinances are prohibitions of sorts or restriction or limitations of rights and we're actually discussing the resolutions to acknowledge the expansion of rights. And if, if there is a way to prescribe that in law, then I think that's an appropriate avenue to pursue. Maybe just so the counselor knows, um, at the time this was introduced, and you know of know the context and what was going on in the city at the time, our new ordinance was also introduced that was withdrawn. And that was an ordinance that called for and required placement of benches on the city uh, sidewalks at so many 
feet apart and at several. So in, basically, it was an ordinance that um, was was specifically focused on benches. Uh, the reason we knew that the benches, and in fact, the benches had been returned at that point, which was why um, we moved towards a resolution uh, option because it was something that was uh, that um, could be broader in scope in terms of reference to and acknowledgement of um, the diversity of interests on on the city streets and sidewalks. But in that, and there's the rub with ordinances. It was a rule prescribing furniture placement on the street. It has nothing to do with social justice. I mean, point of fact, the bench, the benches were the inspiration for the discussion, but point of fact, they, no one's rights were enhanced by the replacement of those benches. They were limited by the re removal of them. So consequently, that's why you're, the resolution at least describes and expresses the will and intent of a, of, of a body. The ordinance is essentially the codification of, uh, of limitations. And so, but there are artful ways to do it. And of course, maybe we don't want to be artful, we want to be good. We want to be right, we want to craft good law. So, that's what I'm saying. In fact, it, civil rights and mm -hmm. the ADA and all kinds of things yeah. actually codify right. the... Well, the ADA <laughs> codifies uh, requirements and, and, and... I was just well, using it as an right, example of right. how we can, as a society... But making reference to those things is entirely relevant. In this case. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I, but I, I'm just saying that. So the distinctions are important, and and one does not preclude the other. And our original hope with drafting this resolution was to literally provoke this very discussion, and discussions beyond this that aren't limited to these chambers, or the women that expand out into the community, so that um, none of us are possessors of the great pure right knowledge and so that we understand how we how we conduct ourselves in a community. So So Counselor like, if we invite the chamber, how about the Florence um, Civic Association sure. also? Absolutely. I, I you know okay. anybody and actually put it out there, I think we need to put it out there in the press to all those citizens because it, frankly uh, the council president and I were responding as well to the many, many, many complaints and concerns we heard from residents who um, complained about, quote unquote, having to run the gauntlet every time they walked down the street. Now, while there's no reference to that in the, um, in the resolution, I think it subtly addresses that well, answers that complaint, not in a satisfying way, I don't think, to those that complain it. But I think that people who have that complaint need to be involved in this discussion because that complaint will continue to be there. Which is why, I mean, I, I think it's important to have this discussion before we start. I mean, I think we all probably have opinions on what we would like this to look like, but it's important to have all voices heard Right. Before we start envisioning mm -hmm. any kind of ordinance that we want to right. have at the end, right? And I and I also think with Councillor Carney and I and all the councillors with the removal of the benches, not knowing about it occurring, and then the outcry. I mean, I think Councillor Carney moved on it very very quickly <clears throat> and attempted to try to put something in place that we were hoping that would have solved the problem. So we've opened the doors now. We're going to go ahead, do the forum, invite the public, put the language in, and let it be. If, if I may, if the timeline, the, the timeline I, I think it's important that we start sooner. I, don't, I wouldn't put an end date on this. Because actually, if the conversation's going, and it's vital, and it's vibrant, I don't see any problem with it ongoing through the summer. At least we're talking about it as opposed to reacting to it. And I'm fine with that. But the, to initiate the conversation, I think it would be better to do that sooner than later. And, um, and that the community, and it doesn't have to be resolved. And I don't think you actually need we're creating a resolution, which is ironic because the term <coughs> <laughs> it's, 
We are resolved. Built to know that some we are resolved. Yeah, no, right. The problem is resolved. The problem is not resolved, but the fact is, is that at least we understand the issues and the pressures and what the the rights that are guaranteed to all of us who who live in this country. So, and and if we that if we're having that conversation, I'd say nine tenths of the. Uh, uh, Nine tenths of the intent of the resolution is starting to be realized, and that that's and 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 I don't presume a satisfactory solution to this or a satisfactory outcome on the resolution that I'm co-sponsor of. But uh, what I am hoping is that merely the conversation, in and of itself, has substantial value, and um, so to that end, anything that we do going forward with that is all the better. Uh, but I. I even with an ordinance, as we all know, nothing is solved by an ordinance. I agree. And that's why you do them very carefully, but uh, and and with great deliberation. And again, I can't uh, agree more. We're not looking for a solution here. I don't think that the whole goal here is to find a solution. I think the goal is, as the councilor said, to keep the conversation open and not be jumping towards solutions and jumping, knee-jerking, knee reacting with ordinances and with, um, you know, some sort of, so, something to fix the problem. I think instead, maybe if we come out of this with some sort of acknowledgement that this is a tension. I think this. we will get some acknowledgement out of this, Councillor Kearney, because of the time involvement last time. It was brought quickly into City Council. And I think with the open public hearings, <laughs> giving the public the opportunity in the agencies to come in and talk, that's the big one. Yeah, and, and just in terms of process, some people suggested, even if as the weather gets better, some of these are forums that, that would make sense to do these in literal open air. I mean, in those places where people are who have no other place to go, who have no home to go to, or have no money to go into a restaurant and sit, who happen to be sitting on a bench or on the street or someplace else. Ooh, so. plein air. Yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You said before, um, vibrant, vibrant conversations. Vibrant, like, vibrant yes. conversations <laughs> for vibrant sidewalks and stuff. Uh -huh. Well, I thank you very, very much. Thank for you thank for you. hearing us, and I appreciate it. Councilor Carty and our council president for being thank here. Thank you for looking at the guidance. resolution as it was written and the reference points that are there. Okay. And congratulations so. on You were kind of instrumental in creating this committee. <laughs> Who was? I, I, the council genius. president. I, well, <laughs> I did, I did assign roles, but clearly not good enough. He was gone for a long time, but it just went on and went on. I asked you. Thank you. And do you have any questions about, you know, anything specifically, the Thank wording you, or anything like that? I think it's not, it's not inappropriate to call me as the writer of that. Okay. I'm happy to talk to anybody Thank about you. it. Thank you, Maureen. Officially, it's social services, veterans, mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. and recreation. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, arts got lost in that. I guess it fits into culture. But um, oh, that's what it's supposed to cover. I, I, I would like us to um, really take this charge of the name of this committee seriously because I think what has happened is it's become a receptacle for a lot of different pieces that are interlinked somehow, but. Um, that actually each have their own culture around them and their own issues attached to them. And so I'm wondering if there's some way in which we can make sure to address each part of this and to, on some kind of rotating basis, 
be able to really figure out who we want to bring in to talk to us about these different issues from the Arts Council to, um, not the Arts Council, what's the other entity that's creating the new um, Arts Center on Holly Street? So yes, I in there. The Center for the Arts, thank yes. you. Um, it, it left my mind for a second. Um, recreation, I think that's a really important piece of this. I think that, you know, speaking to Anne Marie, is that, um, and addressing some of the issues we have with, the new, with Florence Fields, I mean, there are just, there's a lot of potential here to address a lot of issues, and right. all of them, I feel like, are equally important, and I don't want us to get um, sidetracked with one and neglect another. So if there's some way we can create some kind of um, yeah, schedule okay. by which we actually address each one each time. We invite the correct guests so that we're really interacting with the people in our community that... Okay, let me explain things. something to you, Councilor Klein. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is new added on to this committee, Horticultural and Recreation. Right. I've already talked with Pet Keller on this because there is a lot involved there. And Peg and I talked about bringing in Anne-Marie Mojo to come in for recreation and give us an update on what's happening with her department and so forth, and also arts. If you look at the arts of what's occurred here, that there was nothing, nothing, right. absolutely nothing. Remember, I told you about this, October, November, and December. Mm -hmm. No meetings, because they were canceled. So there was no movement going on. So now that it's on our committee, we want to get a hold of Brian Foote, bring him in. And I agree about Holly Street. When I went down there, I thought it was fantastic of them opening up that new arts area. So this is being looked at. It's a charge that's put on here. There was concerns about it being put on here because of our scheduling with other committees going on, I mean other departments and so forth. But this is not something that I as a counselor have just put behind. We're already talking about who to bring in. And that's a great idea. It needs to be done because I'm very concerned, like I even talked with Councillor Adams, and I said, Councillor Adams, you even told me that you very seldom had any meetings. Mm -hmm. There's a lot out there. I, I fully agree. I'd like to see us really just address every single part of, of what's under this committee and um, if we can find a systematic way to do it in a way that is helpful to the departments. Instead, you know, I, what I don't want to see is have them have to do some busy work or create, you know, a, a report for us. Um, yeah, right. I want, if they're going to, we're going to take time from them to tell us what they're doing. I want us to really be able to have that be worthwhile for them and, and um, Right, and what we can do them. as part of the city to help them. Right, exactly. Just like we do with our right. other it's agencies. Not, it's not just about, you know, calling people in and asking them to give us a report. I think it's about them um, thinking about how we can be useful, what kind of um, interaction they want with us, what kinds of very particular issues they have that they would like city support from, city council support around mm -hmm. and they even with the agencies that we deal with on the outside the city works with them very closely if you look at your cdbg grants these are people also agencies who come in right. to city to our committee mm -hmm. and talk about their needs and so forth and we work together the city and the agency so it's just really expanding that to beyond it's, just those social service agencies exactly. to look at the other issues that we have certainly the veterans council and that's big. Steven and interacting with him but i just don't want us to lose sight of the rec piece that's and brand the new and culture piece. it's just come on to this committee right, right. okay so we but i just thought it. we needed to give it voice in our first meeting oh so yes we're really careful to figure out a systematic way as to exactly well so that we peg and i will be working very closely together on this. She's a big inspiration with me because of all the agencies and that. You will find a difference when the Veterans Council comes in. You know, they have their set ways, and you will know some of them. Some of them are from your town area. They're very motivated. In their hearts, they put on the parades, any kind of functions. You will get invitations to go to the VFW meetings they have. <coughs> We're with two club meetings, 
I mean, if you can do them, I very seldom can do them because of my schedule. I can't. But we'll be busy with them. Yeah, I mean, I know that that's, that's always been a very active <coughs> part of And this the Board of Health is another biggie. Right. Because that's a huge issue out there. But, yeah, I agree we need to. But I agree with Council of I mean, this is new to this committee now, and I don't ever want to see something like this where all these meetings did not occur. Right. That has never happened with social services and veterans affairs except for right after election. Last November, we didn't have a quorum. But for years, we always had a quorum. Like we and all agree does we this to committee it. not have any um, community members that are ongoing community members? And if so, why not? I mean, why is it different from a lot of our other... Because you have, like, transportation and parking. You have people that come in, okay, who talk about their streets and they want... But there are also community connected. members that are members of the TPC. So I'm just wondering how... Different get, committees have been set up. Human rights, you get you get them coming in. They'll come in. And you'll have people who also attend the Human Rights Commission. Okay, people on the outside. So well, this is sort of a new amalgam of a committee. Maybe exactly. part of our job <coughs> for the first two years yeah, is, is to structure. think about structure and whether three counselors make sense or maybe, you know, it's all, you know, if... As I think the three of us are envisioning, we want this committee to be and 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 robust and um, really addressing every aspect of it. Maybe part of our job is to think about right. We get the form we're going to have coming up. Look That's different big. than the three of us. <laughs> <Can't be sure. laughs> so maybe for the next agenda, we can talk a little bit about systematizing how we're going to address the different issues. For the issues. next agenda, let me tell you, I need to get recreation in here. Okay, I want Anne-Marie Mojo to come in for the month of March, and then I need to call Brad LeBay today and talk with him, because they're gonna come in here with a schedule to let all of us counselors know about you marching in the parade, and so forth like that. But if you wanna work something up, go ahead and do it. Um, you, you're asking to put it on the agenda, yeah? She wants to put it on that, the Well, to put it on the agenda so that we actually create some, we right. all have input into right. um, how we're going to kind of systematize addressing all of the issues that this committee is charged to hold. Right, well, we are, because we're bringing in the people from recreation. I need to get them in here. Right, but we, I, I think Elisa and I would like to maybe look at the schedule for the year. Um, Maybe scheduled for two years, depending on you not know, two how years. You're not going to get one for two years. Okay. <laughs> we're looking we'll for that's a little year. bit too much. And, and Kella will tell you how long it takes for us to do this type of stuff and get people coming in. Okay. Well, so even even more so if we if we look at it early on in the year, then we could start uh, and sort of plan out yeah. how we'd like it to be. Then that gives people a lot more notice and. It might help with scheduling. Like more people, I don't understand that council when you say it gives people more of a notice. Well, We've for example, never... if we want Brian Foote to come in right. and talk to us, um, and we lay out that you know sometime in. Well, we do that. When we do a schedule, right? Yeah, that's uh, what I, I mean. don't know what's going on. No, I was just saying I don't understand. Okay, when we make out a schedule, right? We sit down, Peg and I, and bring in no matter who you want. We'll work with them to get them in here. So Peg does From all month, the No, I do. From okay. month to month, but I sit down with Peg okay. with certain areas that I need her help. Well, it's appropriate to so bring what, Peg into the process around the social, social services piece. That's that what I'm saying. To me. <coughs> but we're but talking what about I'm just... saying is, like with <coughs> Brian Foote, right. okay, we go by month by month, and we designate a month that we want to bring him in. Right, so I think that's what we're hoping we could do. But that's what time. we do. Every right. month. Could we, could, we have, have, could we put it on the agenda for next meeting to so that we can look at the calendar and, right, and figure out who we want to bring in and, and start right. asking them which month. You we mean, understand that you're the chair yeah, and okay, that you're going to submit I, agenda items. But I we're just suggesting that we as a group have a chance to brainstorm together yes. who we want to reach out to in our community. But that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then we can maybe set up at least a tentative schedule of, and, and I think it does, it gives Brian, if we want to call in uh, Penny Burke, or is it, mm -hmm. yes. am I getting her name right? 
um, I'm right. just brainstorming off the top right. of my head, it gives them, they know that, you know, May is going to be the month that we're going to be talking dedicatedly right. about right. this I don't have a problem with that. Because we schedule May, from month then, to month. And it gives her an opportunity to Right. And Penny Lou, she's my neighbor. Right. You know, so it's not a problem. We do do this. Right. Okay. okay. And we're not going to slide off recreation or either art because I love art. So and I'm just asking get a here. very concrete thing, Marianne. Can we, for the next meeting, put on our agenda time for the three of us as the committee to brainstorm yep. together what the different arenas are that we'd like to discuss, right. who the different players are that we might want to invite to the committee? Um, and set up a tentative schedule sure. so that we can reach out to them. So yeah. just so that it's a group process. Can you I just think. email me that at home? They don't need part of the for... minutes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would like to see that. Great. Yeah. Does okay. that go under like a number? And that wouldn't be new business, right? That would be an agenda item. Yeah. I would like to see it as an agenda item for our next meeting. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And um, <coughs> like I said, I'll talk to Brad LeBay today. Hopefully, if he's not on vacation, and get them scheduled in. Okay. 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 And you'll find maybe five of them will come in. Oh, okay. And <coughs> they'll tell you about the money, what they need, and all this. But I also need to have Steve come in with them. And Steve's in Boston a lot, okay. so I need to designate this before the Memorial Day Parade. Okay. That's a must. Great. That's the thing. But. I'm glad you're both aboard, and I'm glad to be moving on with arts and recreation. Great. It's not a problem. Great. Terrific. I'm excited. So, so to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor. Aye. Aye.